Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome uh, to everybody out there in Celebrating Act 2 land um, with uh, my amazing partner, John Coleman, and the ultra-fabulous Manny Pacheco, uh, our forgotten Hollywood, our Hollywood historian of all things forgotten. And Manny, not known. let me be the first to wish you <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh. Well, it's about over just about, huh? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, well, thank God. <laughs> a lot of people hated 2020. Well, so it, wasn't, I, I, it was not happy old year at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you I, know, Manny. I don't uh, think anybody's I, sorry to see this year go. Oh, oh exactly. Exactly. I, I can. I, I was talking to my wife about how when we were younger, of course, we'd be going to parties. You know, New Year's Eve was party time and New Year's Day was the the parade on television and then a movie or something like that. But these days, as we are a little older and grayer, um, we watch the ball drop on the East Coast in Pacific time, which is what, nine o'clock. <laughs> and we're we're ready for bed or a good movie. And uh, <laughs> it brought to mind the fact that we do. Uh, we do watch a lot of movies on the holidays. And I wondered if uh, you've got any New Year's movies. I was trying to think of some that I there didn't come to mind. Well, there's one that comes to mind, but mostly people like to watch uh, a series of movies. They binge watch movies as they as they wait for the New Year to come in. The one movie that comes to mind that kind of references uh, New Year's uh, Eve into New Year's is that fabulous uh, 1960 classic, winner of the best picture of the year, Billy Wilder directed, Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, The Apartment. Uh, oh, Fred, oh. Fred Murray's in it as well. Yeah, that's that actually uh, has a reference to New Year's. Sure. Believe. Yeah, sure. so that's but it also has a reference to Christmas as well. And yeah. but the apartment is is a, is a really great movie. It, it ends actually on New Year's Eve as they're waiting for uh, for New Year's to hit. And what are they doing? They're playing uh, they're playing a card game. Yeah. <laughs> and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't um, uh, an affair to remember? Doesn't that end with them theoretically going to meet at the Empire State Building on New right. Year's right. New Year's right. Eve, maybe? Right. Yeah. Right. And of course, the ending is completely different another great film but uh, what do you you mentioned binge watching uh, what yeah. kinds of things do you binge watch well on turner, turner classic movies has been real savvy about that for for a couple of years uh, i don't know if they did it this last year but for a couple of years they been they actually had us been binge watch the entire thin man series which wow. was kind of fun to watch Nick and Nora, Nora Charles to bring in the new year, uh, uh, Myrna Loy and William Powell. They made six films together. So if you add the six films up and you begin at, let's say, 5 p.m., you know, you're watching the fifth film as the ball drops. And then you can <laughs> you can uh, finish up by about 2, 2.30 in the morning. And you've watched the entire uh, Thin Man series. A lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it's it's a nice way to do it. But there, but there are other ideas that i've seen on television sometimes people run the twilight zone marathon or maybe the uh the batman marathon i don't know why batman would be so big on new year's eve but uh people like to watch uh, their favorite villain as they bring in the new year <laughs> around around our neck of the woods even though it's uh, probably uh more a christmasy kind of story is we always watch love actually it's a year-end movie uh, that just has a, a good sense of moving forward uh, with uh, uh, new directions for many of the uh, principal characters. So yeah, that's sure. that sort of become a favorite, let's call it year-end movie with us. Good, good, cute, a very fun movie mm -hmm. with a sweet, uh, sweet ending. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Well, you, you, when the new year comes in, you want to feel good. You want to make, you know, hope springs eternal. Yes. You want this next year to be remarkable. So, uh, I mean, why not binge watch something that's a lot of fun? Maybe the entire Blondie series or um, Charlie Chan and, and some watch some mysteries that way. Uh, I mean, there's there's so many Sherlock Holmes. What that would be fun to watch Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, uh, Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce and their series of films. Yeah. That could be a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. I, I think binge watching is is a tradition. You know, I, I don't know why, but when you started saying binge watch and fun and end of the year, Andy Hardy came to mind 
Wouldn't sure. You, I just think that would be because they. How many Absolutely. films did Andy uh, did uh, Mickey Rooney and um, uh, Judy, uh, Judy Garland? Garland. And a few Make others. Together. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Lewis it Stone, been, who actually played Judge Hardy. Sure, it uh, must have been six of them or so. Oh, it was probably more than that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you could binge watch Andy Hardy. And how is that going to be a bad bad evening? It's a lot of fun, a lot of dancing, singing, yeah. uh, comedy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Andy Hardy series was the most successful series in the history of MGM's, uh, it, it, when, when they when they put together like five or six uh, uh, movies that were related in a package, that was the most successful series for MGM. Second was uh, Doctor Kildare. Wow. Well, yeah. you can see why. You can see. Oh, why absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, if you think that uh, Sherlock Holmes was popular uh, for for <laughs> Universal. And uh, the Thin Man was a popular, but they didn't. They never saw that as a series. It was just like, well, let's do a Thin Man movie. It's been a couple of years. But the Andy Hardy series was done like every six months. The Doctor Kildare every six months. Really? So, yeah, it, they they made them fast and furious. But uh, but the Thin Man was very leisurely. Six films over the course of eleven years. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, that uh, Thin Man did very well, though they were remarkably popular until Lassie came along, and that series was also very popular. So uh, they ha they had about two or three Lassies that that you know that spawned a TV show. Yeah, uh, which, we're you know we're talking about an interesting phenomenon, binge watching, which really is only uh, it's a new phenomenon because without cable television and uh, these movie services that are streaming stuff, and now movies on demand you couldn't have been binge watching uh i remember in the old days the uh, television stations mm. would play a marathon, a marathon you know, right. star trek marathon or something like that but you didn't have control over it the way you do today it's even, well, it's even more it. interesting than that is that there are now uh, series that are released the entire uh season to binge watch right. on the, the first day that i i I can't figure that one out. Uh, well, you could go to Target and pick up the entire season three of this or that or the other. Right. You know why binge watching became popular? I'm going to tell you one word sums it up. Okay. TiVo. Mm. The, the minute you could take the commercials out, now you can watch, you know, a two or three or four movies in a row and uh, not worry about the commercials getting in the way. Yeah. So yeah. TiVo really was the, the game changer, I think. And, yep. and the elimination of co commercials, and then of course streaming came along, and that that just about changed everything. So yeah. But uh, I remember uh, I was reading a Facebook message from a friend of mine who had discovered after season four, uh, a Downton Abbey, and they what, what did this what did this come about? <laughs> so to catch up four seasons of Downton Abbey, and you know what? I would do a lot worse than watch D Downton Abbey to bring in the new year. Why not? Sure, yeah, well, sure. Well, we, I had a really great idea. Why not binge watch Celebrating Act Two with all of your contributors right. on uh, New Year's and, Eve? And, what do you think? And conveniently, and conveniently uh, uh, Forgotten Hollywood it has its own playlist. So I think we've got about 30 of them up there right now. And quite frankly, I've actually looked, uh, for other reasons, I was looking at some of the older, they're, they're as fresh and as, as fun as now, we just have a little bit better video and control over uh, what we're doing over here uh, on technology. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of binge watching and coming late to the party, uh, my wife has always watched out now, Abby. We just, uh, we, we've watched a whole bunch of smaller new episodes of Ms. Marvel's Mrs. Maisel, Emily in Paris, but we just started watching, had never seen a single episode before of Schitt's Creek. Well, oh, can, can he say that? Can he say that and get away with yeah, it? Yeah, we're on. Sure, it's cable television. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is cable, right? And even if it's not, uh, given uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, newscasters today, they use it a lot worse than that. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm saying it the way it's spelled: S C H. Okay, so of course you are. Oh, so yeah, you can hear that. Yeah, absolutely. But <laughs> in, in any event, so what, what is that on? Like four or five seasons. And once you get past the first two or three episodes, it's funny. It, well, there you go. It really is funny. Yeah, well, you know, and we, speaking of binge watching, uh, we didn't even find Game of Thrones until two years after or a year after it was finished. Uh, and then watched the whole series in a couple of months. 
So there you go. Yeah, yeah, there you so, go. Yeah. So thank God for te modern technology. That's all but I can there's, say. There's there's some great great series uh, as, as serials as as as, uh, as well. Uh, of 1930s, 1940s uh, films that uh, you would, I mean, you could, you could watch the entire, you know, Frankenstein uh, series of films. I mean, there's just so many that you can watch. Uh, of course, one that's all but forgotten, I would be remiss if, if I didn't mention Henry, Henry, Henry Aldrich. Aldrich. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever talks about Henry Aldrich, but you know, there was a series of films made about him. Sure. Uh, and why not uh, binge watch if you want to see something remarkable uh, from the 1940s that's all but forgotten? That would you be. You know, speaking of binge watching and series, uh, I have not seen, and it's probably out there somewhere on YouTube or on a, maybe an old movie channel, but I have not seen the old, is it Republic serials, the, the, mm. the one reelers? They were what? They were fifteen minutes each, or something. Sure, I'd sure. See them in the. I, as a kid, I can remember going to the movie theater, right? And I'd see this Commander Winslow of the Navy, you know, <laughs> at fifteen minutes, and it always left you, you know, with a damsel in distress or whatever. The right. world about to blow up. Oh, oh, the end of the what? What? The cliffhanger. They were masters oh. at cliffhangers. And of course, but I would, I would love to binge watch. You know, whatever they had, ten or twelve episodes of uh, Commander Winslow of the Navy, or uh, you know, we, we somebody. We just gotta find them wherever they are. We gotta find them and play yep. them. Same thing on yep. the Westerns Channel, where they love to play uh, 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 all the uh, all the, the the William Boyd, uh, Hopalong Cassidy. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, just great stuff. So, the the so, films, the TV show. So, Manny, yeah. on your on your on your website, uh, ForgottenHollywood.com. Do you have a list of binge watchable older stuff? If not, <laughs> could you add it? That would be a very useful service. Well, I've got tw I got twenty one hundred blogs. So if anybody wants to binge watch and start reading my blogs, have at it. My sister did it. You can do it. <laughs> you know what? That's a good idea. Because yeah. I, I do love your blogs. If they're, they're as much fun as talking to you. Oh, thank you. I, I I appreciate that. That's a kind. That's a kind thing to say. So. Uh, with that, uh, I wish everybody a happy new year and a happy binge watching of the uh, movies of your choice. But but binge watch. Yes. And, you know, you'll excuse me while I go bury this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got my shovel. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Let's forget about it. Well, the wonderful thing about any new year is we can always look forward. That's the important thing. So good luck to everybody. Have a great New Year's. We'll see you soon. Cheers. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.